Let me tell y'all to start with, I am not a public speaker. <laughs> but rumor has it my ancestors were very good at this, so we're going to hope it crept into my DNA. Um, I'm going to let you all start. Who's got questions? Nobody has questions? Do we actually know where Corsoff's body is buried? Yes, we do. It's at 2 Andy Lee. It is definitely there. Absolutely. Yeah, 100% sure. Are you in native dress right now? I am. I am in a traditional ribbon skirt mm -hmm. and ribbon shirt. Mm -hmm. This is not what they had way back in the day. This is a little bit later. He is Shawnee. Mm -hmm. There are lots of myths about my grandfather. Um, we'll start with the war. Can everybody hear me? Close enough anyway? He did not want this war. He thought that everybody would be able to live together, share the land. But when he realized that was not going to happen, he had to do what he had to do to protect his people. Um, <clears throat> after the battle, he signed the uh, Camp Charlotte Treaty. That treaty basically said that we stayed north of the river in Ohio and everybody else stayed south of the river in West Virginia. That did not, not take place. Our villages continued to be plundered in, raided. Our women were hurt. Our children were hurt. And our warriors were angry. He didn't want to go to war again. He didn't want any more loss of life. Battle of Point Pleasant, we lost our war chief, Okshinwa. Uh, he was also Tecumseh's father, and he's also a grandfather on another line. He didn't want any more loss. However, he didn't really have a choice. So he came back to Point Pleasant to renegotiate that treaty. Everything was okay for several days. Then his two sons and his brother came. They were concerned he'd been gone a little longer than they thought he should. Everything was still okay. And then one morning, one of the soldiers went hunting and a Mingo shot him. It wasn't the Shawnee. It had nothing to do with us at all. It was a Mingo. But a man by the name of John Hall broke into the cabin, killed Hornstock, his two sons, and his brother. So the nation lost two chiefs. I lost two grandfathers. Many people say that it's not important. Seven generations later, it's, it doesn't matter. My blood's thinned out. I won't completely go into the Shawnee Seventh Fire teachings. I am his seventh generation, I am his seventh fire. It matters. It will always matter. It is said, with his dying breath, that he cursed this land. He's blamed for the Silver Bridge, Marshall plane crash, the explosion of the courthouse. He's to blame for the price of eggs. <laughs> However, he was one of the most honorable chiefs in history. Cursing the land would constitute cursing Mother Earth, and he didn't do it. It didn't happen. Promise. Did not happen. Sometimes I goof around about it a little bit. But it's caused issues. Um... I've been attacked over twice. 
It just didn't happen, guys. Didn't happen. I'm sorry. Didn't happen. Then we have this movie on sci-fi called The Mothman. In that movie, they beat him until his eyes turned red. Well, that didn't take place either. That's a movie. It's not history. It didn't happen. But many people think he's the Mothman. He's not the Mothman. I'm not sure what the native connection is to the Mothman. Some have said it was the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird is not Shawnee. Thunderbird is southeast. Not us. Southwest, I'm sorry. People say, well, maybe it's the spirit of an eagle dancer. Eagle dance is not a Shawnee dance. Did another tribe come here and maybe gift him with a dance? I guess that could be possible. I don't know. Anybody else have any questions? Tuaniwi is a Wyandot word. It means point of two rivers. Anybody else? Well, I thought there'd be a million questions for me. Yes. We are Water Panther Clan Shawnee. No piece of dotum, Shawnee Dossie. That stone has the Water Panther symbol etched into it. It was actually stolen off one of our mounds. And I guess the guy donated it to the state to keep him going to jail. Um, that stone says that the steps on it, for lack of a better word, I suppose, were where we worshipped our gods. There were not multiple gods. There's only one God. Creator is it. That's all. We don't worship the sun. We worship, worship the power behind the sun. Anybody else? Yes. Is Cornwell your maiden name? Or it is. So when did that originate? Like when did you all take on um, like certain... Well, believe it or not, Cornwell name does not go to, doesn't go to Cornstalk. The Cornwell name actually goes to Chief Logan. I can't see out there real good. Just jump up and down and throw things at me or something. Yes. I'm sorry, honey, I can't. Actually, the Indians won that battle. We did. That's ours. Um, the war chief is the only one that is actually buried on the battlefield if he's killed in the battle. All the other warriors are carried back to the village and buried there. And it was all over Point Pleasant. It was all over the place. It was short and sweet, but it was bad and ugly. Yes. Yes. Not exactly, no. I think we lost about 700. But we still won the battle. Anybody else have anything? Yes. Could you maybe just explain your family tree to us a little bit? Just like how it went down in generations, like, and who became chief and who didn't? I'm sorry? And like who became a chief after um, the massacre and... You want his, his lineage? Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah. Okay. He is a... Uh, nobody can be chief until they're 30. He is the son of Achawelis Cornstalk, who was village chief. His grandfather is Hopalespa Cornstalk. I'm sure everybody knows him. Everybody, people get Hopalespa confused with him. This is not Hopalespa, this is Kate Hopwa. Just a long line of chiefs, honey. Long line of chiefs. 
a lady wrote a book and she calls all of his daughters his sons her reasoning behind that was because it said chief in front of their name Shawnee women were chiefs we were in our own villages we were warriors we went to war swing a war club with the best of them and women's council pretty much ran the show nothing took place unless women's council's council was consulted I thought I saw a hand yes was there a relationship between Cornstock and Tecumseh? If so, could you explain what that was? Tecumseh's daddy was the war chief, Um, So they were all very close. Tecumseh was not in this war. Lots of people think he was. Tecumseh was born on the way from Kishpaka Sept to Chalakatha to discuss this war. Tecumseh was still in Pampers. He wasn't in this war. Um, there's a uh, plaque down at 2 Wee that says that this war left Tecumseh an orphan. That's not true. Tecumseh had his mama, his brothers, and a tribe full of people. If you're Shawnee, you're not an orphan ever. You've got your family. Did that? That good? That work? Yes. Anybody else? Oh, come on now, you guys. I have a question about your personal ancestry. And um, can you trace your lineage from this region? Were you, were you able to stay here, your family? Or do you have movement and then movement back to this region? We have both. We have both. I have family in Oklahoma. I have family here. It is said that we did not stay here. That there were no Shawnee here at all after the 1800s, but that's not true. The Shawnee didn't run ever from anybody or anything. So when the removal started, many went to the woods and they stayed in the woods. They built their cabins. So, the people that say that we're not here, we don't exist. Well, maybe I'm right here. I promise I exist, I think. I mean, I can pinch myself a little bit, I might scream. Anybody else got anything? Do I have any family members out there? Where's my cornstalk descendants at? Yes, sir. Um, I'm just part of the presentation. Can you explain the connection with Chief Logan? Cornstalk is not related to Chief Logan. They were just buddies. Okay. Chief Logan was a bingo. Cornstalk Shawnee. Um, Chief Logan did not want to have a war either. Nobody wanted to go to war. Nobody wanted to fight. There was no real need to fight. There was plenty of land for everybody to share. But some people got greedy, I won't mention any names. And then there you go. We lost everything. And again, people think it's not important, but it's important. I'm uh, very blessed to be where I am. I can walk from one end of this town to the next in buckskin, burning sage, and nobody blinks an eye at me. I am extremely thankful to my people. people behind him but uh, John Hall pulled the trigger and I had the uh, wonderful pleasure no sarcasm of meeting his descendant he left with his hair <laughs> it was a he was quite proud of himself and there was not too much I could do with my uh, stomach and my throat and in tears because it does still matter Uh, that's the rumor I hear. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm getting up there in age, but I'm really not that old. Anybody else? Yes. Is his entire body buried in there? Is his son with him and his brother? 
No. Um, the only thing that they found, the only remains they found of him were a few bones and a couple of teeth. Where the rest of it went, I, I, it, I'm sure it went back to the earth, which is what he would have wanted it done. Um, his sons were thrown in the river. Um, his brother was thrown in the river. The only one that got any respect. And I believe that they did try to give him what he would have wanted. I guess we'll give him an A for effort. Anybody else? I believe that Black Wolf took over. Anybody else got anything? Yes, ma'am, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I was reading recently in a, an alternative history of West Virginia that and this author stated, and I'm sorry I don't remember who he was, that there were never any permanent settlements of Native Americans in West Virginia. He was saying the only state in the Union, the continent of the United States, that did not have permanent settlements in West Virginia. I find that very hard to believe. He's, he's, he's not correct. It's also said that we didn't live in Point Pleasant because that we felt that the, the connection of the two rivers was unholy. How could that be unholy? That's the, that's the most sacred thing ever. We had village sites all over this area, everywhere. The largest village, village site in West Virginia was in Mason County. You're welcome. Next time you see him or... Or book read it. Reading. Yeah, just tell them they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think what he's referring to is John Keel's book on around here and not find an arrowhead. 
we were here. It's it's just it's definite fact, etched in stone, this was ours. with under the tree grew up in one of those settlement schools. One of those schools designed to civilize the Indian children. How they thought they'd ever civilize Cornwell is just beyond me, but they tried it, I guess. Um, 1965 was a turning point for us. Prior to 1965, you were not allowed to own property you were not allowed to claim to be Native American at all. They could have taken my mother away from them. And there's a slight possibility they could have taken me as well. So, it wasn't spoken of. Their lives depended on it. My <clears throat> life probably depended on it as well. Lots of sad stuff you find when you do native research, when you do family research. But you just have to move on from it. The blessings are still there. Anybody else have anything for me? Yes. Yes, and yes. We were. That's a. That's how we married. We did not rack. And there are several mounds here. The Shawnee are Eastern Woodland Indians. We didn't live in teepees, and we didn't have big fancy war bonds. Again, most of the time, feathers were worn. One to three were just worn down. Now the statue. I'm sure everybody's seen the statue, right? How the five feathers are up. That would have been the headdress that he wore with his business suit. So that is traditional. That, that statue is perfect. It's beautiful. But the big war bonnets, those were not ours. Anybody else got anything? Yes. 
this. My papa went to school, went to a civilized uh, settlement school. He was not on a census for 20 years while he was there. Because if you did not assimilate the way that they wanted you to, you got killed. You did as you were told. You learned. I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm not going to be politically correct. You learned quite ways and you died. <coughs> Simple as that. <coughs> Anybody else got any questions? Well, y'all are quiet. Up in front, there's a question. Yes. So you, you, you mentioned that the DMT area was a burial ground. Yes. Now it's also a place where they put all the munition stuff in the <laughs> I think there are things that need to be left alone. Everybody's things need to be left alone, not just our things. Everybody has their special things, whether, especially burial grounds, that's really bad. Whether it belongs to us, whether it belongs to somebody else. Leave people alone. And all these statues they're taking down, those aren't my heroes, those aren't my people. But leave it alone because it's important to somebody. If anybody tried to mess with these, with the monument or the statue, I would have a fit. I don't think anybody should have their special things messed with, and especially their burial grounds. But people seem to think that's okay because it's history and it needs to be studied. A lady rolled her eyes at me one day and she says, well, that's our history. And I said, no, ma'am, that's my aunt. <laughs> Did that help you? Did that make sense? If I'm not clear about something, just keep right on going. We'll just stay here all day. I guess that one got canceled. We'll just... <laughs> so has this public speaking thing gotten into my DNA? Am I doing okay? I haven't fainted. <laughs> I got my next of kin right there close in case I do. <laughs> Anybody else got anything for me? It doesn't. We didn't have princesses. That's just made up silliness. <laughs> exactly. Drives me absolutely crazy. I'm trying to put it out there. But you know, there's a lot of people that look, had a guy the other day tell me I didn't know what I was talking about because he'd read it in an Alan Eckler book. Really? That's a book. That's a novel. You know, tribal stuff and real stuff and and it's not in the history books. Somebody will say, "Well, I'm a history major. How do I miss? How do I miss that?" Well, because we didn't discuss it. You know, a lot of tribes just put it all out there. They just tell you anything you want to know. Shawnee were more private than that. We. We kept our secrets our secrets. We still do, for the most part. Um, but, you know, many people, when approached, and they say, and it's mostly the Cherokee gets this, we don't get it too much. But they'll say, oh, well, my grandmother's a Cherokee princess. Some of my people will flip out on them. I try not to flip out. Because I know that all they mean is it was one of the chief's daughters. <coughs> so I try to educate and correct instead of flip out. But I've done a few of those too. Yes, honey. Well, 
Yeah. <coughs> the tribes out of Oklahoma want to reclaim it. Um, most of them want to reclaim it because they want a casino out here. It's against Shawnee Law to drink. So why are we going to serve alcohol to people if it's illegal? Um, I love my people, but there's lots of disagreements between us and them. And I wish that there was some way to rebuild that bridge, because we didn't burn that bridge down. But nobody seems to want to do it. I can't build a bridge by myself. So I'll do my thing, they'll do their thing, and I'm sure I'll get fussed out about something, and that's fine. So I thought I would get fussed out enough. It'd be okay. Isn't that right? <laughs> Did that make any sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. We have three governing forces. Um, there's the absentee, the loyal band, and the eastern band. They're all in Oklahoma. No. Um, once in a while they'll come out here, they'll send the warriors out here if there's an absolute full-blown emergency. But um, I stopped calling them. I stopped calling them for help. I am like, I just got disappointed. You know, money's fine and we all have paid light bill. But his honor, his ways, what he wanted, it's more important than a buck. I think so anyway. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. I'm pretty grateful. And then his seventh generation, it's my job to take care of him. It's my job, it's my privilege, it's my honor. You're supposed to plan for your next seven generations. So when he was sitting around the fire back in the day, it was me that was on his mind. He wanted to, he was thinking of how he wanted the nation to go for me. Um, that's pretty serious stuff. People say he's evil. He's not evil. He's a chief. He was a husband, a father, a grandfather, a brother. He's extremely honorable. I could be biased, I suppose, but I think he rocks. Anybody else got anything for me? I have a question. Yes. You said earlier about not going to the gravesite. Okay, I can't hear you, honey. Do what? You come up here if you want to. I'll give you this mic, but I'm not going to say help. <laughs> I don't go to TNT. That's the only one I don't go to. I go to all the other. I spend hours sitting on mails. But a lot of the remains were dug up at TNT. The spirits are crazy. Um, I don't know if y'all believe this stuff or not, but you know, you can get attached by a bad spirit. A bad spirit can get you. One and only place I've ever had that happen to me was at TNT. I was so sick, I let my husband drive my car. God help me, you couldn't pay me to ride with him. <laughs> oh. Did that answer your question okay? Maybe. Anybody else? As the seventh generation, uh, you said that your job, part of your job, is to protect and honor Cornstalk. Have you ever thought about writing a history so that those of us, I grew up in Point Pleasant and I've always heard the bad stuff, but I haven't really heard a lot of the good stuff. Have you ever thought about writing that so that you could share from his viewpoint? 
I've thought about thinking about it. <laughs> How's that for an intelligent answer? Um, I mean, in my mind, it's a shame that we came from all over the place and ran Indians out of anywhere, you know, and they were an honorable people in a lot of ways. Some, you know, tribes were different, but I mean, that's history too, and it would be wonderful to know from that view. <laughs> I agree with you. Maybe I need to think about that some more. Because you're right. You're right. This story needs to be told the correct way. I'll give that some thought. I'll type it for you. Will you? Okay, you're hired. What you charging me? Zero. Girlfriend, I pay you in beads and shells. <laughs> you know, I might get in real big trouble for talking about this, but I'm going to get in trouble anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, we have lots of people running around here in a Pocahontas Halloween costumes. We've got the Boy Scouts running around here in their war bonnets and their bustles. And, you know, like I said before, the war bonnets are not ours. We didn't wear those. But each feather in the war bonnet means something. Uh, are there any veterans out here? Where are my veterans? Where's my warriors at? I'm not a veteran. What if I put a bronze star on? It's not cool, is it? No. So let's take the war bonnets off the Boy Scouts. Because that's what the war bonnet is. It's a, it's a metal, so to speak. Each feather means something. And if I put one of those little colonial dresses on and cut it to my thighs and wore it with stilettos, I can promise you I'd be shot. So why is it okay if it's not okay for me to do it? Why is it okay for them to do it? Anybody out here want to choke me yet or throw something at me? <laughs> um, anybody else got anything? What was their typical diet like? Did they raise corn or what did they have? Corn, beans, and squash. Deer. I'm sure rabbit and squirrel, buffalo. The buffalo were mostly, I mean, they were here, but mostly that was Western Plains. <coughs> there was no McDonald's or Geno's. Probably would have liked it though. Anybody else? Yes. I've not heard of that, but I don't think that would have happened. I, I just don't see that happening. I mean, I may be wrong, but I don't think so. Yes? What, who did what? minutes and I still didn't pass out. Anybody else have any more questions? Yes. I'm sorry. I think we came in late and you were talking about this when we came in. Could you explain the, the water panther in a little more detail and what your child's belief? 
was in the Water Panther and how that all played into everything. All of the chiefs came from the Water Panther clan. Um, the Water Panther is a mystical. It's not, I mean, we don't have Water Panthers. Um, it's pr pronounced the Pisa Dotum. Um, some people have actually shortened it where they just call it Panther Clan and they use the, the Panther. Um, there was a rock that fell about 10 years ago and it had the face of a panther on it. It had been etched into the stone. So there's got to be some connection there with the water panther and panther. What that connection is, I'm not absolutely certain. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Where are you all going? I'm not slinging tomahawks in here. You better get back here and sit down. Do you have any questions? Um, you can sprinkle tobacco. You, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just split a cigarette, take the tobacco out of it, and, and sprinkle it next to his monument. Tobacco is the uh, the sacred herb for the Panther Clan, Water Panther Clan. See, I did it too. Mm -hmm. so. Somebody else had their hand up. Yes. Um. The, the new Mothman documentary that you were in, was, yes. was that the first time that you've really spoken out publicly about um, your family in relation to the Mothman? It is. And um, I was wondering what your experience was like with the film crew, like, were they shocked? The set was wonderful. Um, if Seth had not been so wonderful, I wouldn't have done it. I attempted to do one a few years ago, and they twisted my words and turned my words to where I don't even know what I said, and I pulled all that stuff off me right in the middle of it and walked off with a few choice words as I was going. So Seth was amazing. Um, he didn't tell me what to say. He said, you just tell your story. And he did not, he didn't twist my words. He didn't edit out important stuff. It was as I said it. I was nervous doing it. But it, Seth was just amazing. People desperately want me to say that yes, the curse exists and yes, he's the Mothman. And they will twist my words and turn my words until I don't even know what my name is. Those people, I stay very far away from because I will take their head off. <laughs> Not really. I'll probably break a nail. No, I don't want to do that. Yes. It was said that it was not a spirit of my people. That it was the spirit. You know, I don't know how to explain this and it come out right. Um, sometimes when people are gone and they're still lingering around, they don't know what they don't know they're gone. So they say it was the spirit of a soldier. What better revenge than to get the chief's kid? Boy, it got me too. <laughs> Anybody else got anything?
I burn a lot of sage. I smudge a lot. Every morning, every night. Um, but, no, not really. I don't. Not really, no. Anybody else got any questions? Um, just pray however you pray. You offer the tobacco with your left hand. Everything that is done is done with honor. It comes from your left hand because it's closest to your heart. I think I know this pretty lady that just walked in here. She may want this microphone.